Welcome to the Behind the Art Inspiration podcast, a sneak peek into the studio practices of all types of artists, conversations for collectors who love to listen to the banter and the creative process of artists. I'm your host, Caroline Karp. Let's get to it. Well, hello, everyone. This is episode, this is actually season two, episode 15 of the Behind the Art Inspiration podcast. And in this episode, I'm connecting with painter, printmaker, educator, and innovator, Elise Wagner of Portland, Oregon. Elise's work melds her creative spiritual practices with her fascination with education in various disciplines of science, physics, astronomy, geology, cartography, and meteorology, and how they relate to changing technologies and the environment. So how you doing, Elise? I'm doing great. How are you? Great. Thanks. So tell us, I want to dive right in there. And I, 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 I took that from your bio. Mm -hmm. I just copy pasted it. This is Pippin <laughs> saying hello. Um, but tell us, tell us more about that, your fascination. Um, well, I, I've really just had an interest in, uh, navigation and mapping and our place in the world and how it relates to our everyday life. And so I, um, I've taken a real interest in, oh, I can't, you know, huh. I'm half asleep. That's okay. I woke you up. Sorry. Earlier. We're on opposite sides of the continent. So it makes sense. True. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> uh, I really enjoy, um, combining the celestial with the, um, the mapping or the, first of all, it's my approach to abstraction. Gotcha. So okay. how I, uh, get started in a painting is I would look at lines and a map and things and where I am in my place in the world. And then translated into my work through line and and then what was happening when I initially started doing um, the kind of work that's related to um, science and cartography was the uh, a real interest in the storms, the storm patterns and how uh, especially in the early part of the 90s, uh, there were a lot of horrible hurricanes and you know things were uh satellite technology became something that was you know available for to use to get accurate uh weather forecasts and things like that and so i was really interested in looking at the weatherman standing up there and saying and this is going to happen and this is going to happen and all with all of this certainty but yet science is so mysterious and, and the weather is so mysterious. And of course you have the climate that is affecting that, uh, that I just like playing with that notion of our, our idea of being exact or knowing when we don't know and, and playing within the realm of the unknown and the known with my work. And so I like to, present things that are very like you'll see graphic elements in my work uh, that present like uh, more of like this is the exact thing you know or this is the point of which things happen and then all of this other chaos going around it and so I like to combine those two elements together in my work if that makes one ounce of sense. Yes, it does. And, and uh, it makes me think of atmosphere. So it makes me think of instead of it being like grounded in the earth or perhaps under the water, I'm picturing more of what's happening in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, <laughs> the outer atmosphere, the outer yeah. world almost. Uh, and then that's where the spiritual aspect comes into my work, like outer realms or things that we're unaware of, the forces of energy that are working in our favor, yeah. out of our favor, creating joys and happiness and the position of the planets and all of these things are elements that go into the work. Um, I got really interested in particle physics uh, when I saw these old 1950s images, some of the first pictures taken of particles within a bubble chamber. And I found those to be very 
beautiful and magical. And I actually became quite obsessed with these lines and dots that you can see uh, within this bubble chamber. And I just like the, um, the idea of the mystery involved with science and with all of these things. So like the neutrino particle is, um, is something that I got really interested in because it was, it's, it's, it's called the neutrino because the neutrino means little elusive one. Mm. And this, this mysterious particle that they can't get to charge or see. And so I, I just took that as a overall concept because I can't get my head around physics. I am not a physicist. I am not a scientist. I am someone who's kind of translating these things into my work. Um, and then on a larger scale or later, um, I, I, I interrelated that and everything that I'm interested in to what's happening with the climate and, um, and climate science and how, yes, science is a mystery and, you know, it's a, it's a matter of discovery, but yet it is also something that is presenting fact to us and we are not looking at it very seriously and the world is collapsing around us. So, um, you know, light subject matter for my work, I guess. Uh, so, so talk to me about like showing up in your studio to your artwork, right? And mm -hmm. so we've heard what interests you and what inspires your work. What does it look like uh, when you sit in front of your canvas or your work what what are your first steps in putting your ideas down on the canvas if that makes sense yeah um usually it's it's through a uh, a decision about color um you know i get the the um the panel prepared and then um i work with wax and so um i usually decide about color and what an ultimate background color would be uh, what the initial layer would be that I would be uh, then digging back into. So uh, the encaustic medium is really kind of a physical medium that has, uh, you know, a lot of ability to have depth, a lot of depth. And that's why everybody, a lot of people enjoy the encaustic medium because it's so luminous and depthful. Um, and so I will start with a color. Sometimes I will see, um, I, I grab a pile of these books that I love and I have them nearby and I look through them um, and they are, um, they're always very close by. They're right over there. Um, get them. You can get one. Um, yeah. This is a bouncy podcast. Okay. Okay. Good. I even look at people's artwork sometimes. So, oh, okay, good. <laughs> and I like seeing what I see behind you, which I think are your small works that I've seen on um, on your Instagram feed. Yes, I, these are, this is, um, this is a work in progress, this big one. Yeah. And then here is, um, these are the, this is one of the, this is one of the small works and it's drying. Um, Confluence? For the next set, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I see a grid. Yeah. Will the grid stay? Yeah, the grid will stay. And um, I just put copper oil paint on it. And these are um, various rune symbols and um, uh, like the symbol of the North Node of the Moon. and and things like that and elements like that that are in here and then i'm going to go over this with a uh a pan pastel and it's going to bring out a little bit more of It'll the top it. there yeah yeah um that's one of those uh another this is very saturated with phthalo blue right now or not phthalo, but Payne's gray. What I see is um, that does look like cartography. Yeah. And when you're uh, doing images, that's happening with the wax. You're not taking a pre-image and putting it on, correct? 
No, I'm not. Um, I am really uh, influenced by a lot of different aerial photography and satellite photography. Yeah. Um, I'm going to just grab another. So we're in Elisa's studio in case you're wondering how she's bouncing around and because some of the some of these some people will be listening audio and they won't have any video. So I'll be speaking while you're getting your stuff. <laughs> Great. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would have been more prepared. That's OK. Uh, oh, and man, 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 oh, so Elise is getting something for us to look at. And she's going <laughs> to tell us about it. Be really descriptive in your description of it. So I am a huge fan of, and I read about this, things really started shifting in 2018 towards more of a cartographic look to my work or with um, drone technology coming about. Um, I started really looking at these, these photos as abstractions, as these beautiful uh, naturally made abstractions. Um, so I found all of these different books and one of the one of the ones that was striking to me and that I know an artist in our group that knows this person wow <laughs> this is a photography of Edward Burchinsky okay and he does a lot of um photos of um like environmental degradation, industrial pollution, that kind of thing. And so some of the shapes and things in these photographs are very inspiring. Um, and I will go and I'll look through these books. Like here's one of my very favorites uh -huh. and I see all the post-its in it. And then my dictionary of symbols, um, very important. Um, and it's sort of like shaping a, um, a skeletal idea of what's going to happen in the painting once I get started. So um, this one here, for example, is a start. This is a start. Right. It's, it's 24 by 60. Uh -huh. And um, and I am basing that on a photo I saw of the ocean. And so I'm basing myself from there. And then I don't know what's going to happen next i'm going to create these multiple layers in the wax and then i'm going to see how the painting talks to me so i do a real narrative approach with my work you know so i will sometimes it will stubbornly come to me or come out as a painting and sometimes it just happens and and we get along great but there's a process of you know, there's that push-pull process, a very classic process. Hans Hoffman, the painter, mm -hmm. did a lot of um, that in, at his school of, you know, push-pull shapes, things, dimensions. Um, but I am primarily just going with a certain flow or trying to get into a certain flow. And I'll start first by color. And then, um, and then I'll lay it down and I'll figure out, okay, in order to maintain that color, I have to layer this on top of this, on top of this. So my medium, uh, I will let the waxes or the colors mix together a lot of the time, but I also separate layers in my work and so that you can see through to the very beginning of the piece. Do you mean by that, uh, do you mean, that you leave that area alone or what you're putting on top of it reveals it? What I put on top reveals it. So I will work a lot with like clear medium layers to, to keep certain aspects of it. And, and then I move on or I'll work with different, um, different glazed layers or um, lighter hues of the color so that they're transparent. So what does your palette look like? Like, is it a bunch of waxes? Is it paint? Is it both? Oh yeah, I can take you on a tour. It's not on right now. It has to be on, but right. I'm a wax painter who has to have my wax on. Um, so what I often do is I'll, I'll go and do a whole bunch of things um, around the house before I come in and get started. And I'll come in here and I'll just turn this on. 
So this is my palette. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> just for the people who are listening to this, she's got like a hot tray, a hot plate that heats mm -hmm. up to about what temperature would you say? Uh, 170 ish. And then, uh, it, so there's, you mix, you put the pigment, how does the wax come? Do you get a can of wax? wax? Wagon. Huh? <laughs> this is my wax wagon. Too. Wax wagon. Um, yeah. So, um, so the, uh, I, it heats up to 168 degrees. I mean, technically it, it's molten at 168 or 70 degrees. And then uh, I, uh, I start with a base of a pot of clear beeswax combined with Damar resin. And then I transfer that uh, batch of big batch of wax into cans with a ladle. And then I take a little bit of um, color, whether it's RNF uh, colors, RNF encaustic colors, or sometimes I take my own pigment and I make my own colors with it. And I have an extensive selection of, of pigments I'll probably never use because you don't really need that very much pigment to make, you know, I make mostly transparent colors. So, um, even if you get a solid chunk of encaustic paint, um, it goes a long way because you're always thinning it with clear beeswax to get these transparent layers. Wow. And yeah. I teach it, I've been teaching it for 25 years. And, okay, you know, yeah. I haven't taught it lately. I'm getting inquiries. <clears throat> I, I, I am part of a masterclass called uh, Painting with Fire. Okay. And I produce videos for that. And um, and it's it's quite the group of people that have signed up for the master class. A lot of people are learning the medium right now from from 24 different encaustic instructors around the world. Wow. So, um, yeah, so it's uh, and the other thing that I did with wax is that I print. Um, I print from the texture of the wax. Mm. So, Okay. Yeah, I don't have like a simple, I guess you could say I don't really have a simple process. <laughs> so I, I always, uh, I'm always pushing the boundaries of the medium and trying different things. And sorry about my pets. They're both very upset that I am not in bed with them right now on Sunday morning. <laughs> Just Mine's kind of eating. what's going on. <laughs> Mine's eating right there so you can hear her chewing. <laughs> Um, so your, your process to me sounds very like all immersive, like your entire being is in your learning, you're exploring, you're moving. It's probably very sensory. Yeah, yeah. it is. It is a, a big part of my process too, is just coming in to the space and creating an, an, an atmosphere, you know, and so I, I do that by, I um, have this ritual of lighting the uh, charcoal frankincense and mm. I smudge the place all the time. And I'm always kind of moving the energy through and out. And I love inviting people into the space because I feel like that is also something that provides me with a certain amount of um, yes energy or you know to to continue going uh because it gets you know as an artist it gets kind of lonely to do art you know and you're isolated and everything like that and of course we've had all of this isolation so it's nice to have studio openings and things like that i have uh, one coming up for um the holidays It'll be my 19th annual one and and then i'm about to finish the small works and put those on my website soon and but it is an all immersive process I'm always I'm kind of all over the place a little bit but it's also very structured and organized in the studio so that I can be or all over the place yeah. <laughs> um, it's so a, I call that like I call that setting the stage so that yeah, when you can right. walk in yeah. you can just dive yeah. into any area that's available yeah that's a very that's that's that is, I guess, the key. Yeah. Right? It's the key to continuing uh, is to set the stage constantly and know that, okay, I left that there. That's where that is. I'm like yesterday, I found this shard of like a, an example of my 
um, some some demonstration I did years and years ago of a acetone transfer on a piece of paper. This piece of paper is right over there. It's been lying around on the floor. It just keeps getting in it. I'm like, you know, I've got to just do something with this piece of paper. So I can't get to it right now, but I put it in this pile of pieces <laughs> that I, I'm going to be making in the future. And I'm going to put it on there and I'm going to make a collage with it or something. So I put it over there so that I know that's what that's for. Yeah. And then in my, in my, um, and I, and I can, I have my own inner cues, you know, everybody has those inner cues. So I, um, I have a flat file and I just put everything in one drawer that is a separate project for the future. And that drawer is getting just so stuffed. And I'm, I'm just like, I've got to get to it. You know, I'm always going back into that drawer of goodies and going, okay, what are we going to make with this? You know? And, um, so sometimes when I'm, um, like finished with a body of work and I'm looking for something different or new to do, I will go into that drawer or I'll come in here and I'll look through my books and I'll just keep, keep the, um, the engine oiled, uh, in my, in my ideas and my thoughts and, I'll get an idea from traveling or, and then I travel with my watercolor, my little watercolor book and mm -hmm. I just jot things down or I, I draw, I take a lot of pictures of, you know, concrete walls and things. And then I try and adapt them and, and interpret them into my work, into the texture. So a lot of things like that go on on an ongoing basis. And then I get NASA images and I get, um, all these Google Earth images sent to me um, on a on a regular basis, so I can kind of just keep looking at that for inspiration. Um, this is another really fabulous one. Whenever you see Post-it things in my books, yeah. that's when you know that's one of my favorite ones. So tell us what it is, because some people are just listening. So this is um, "You Are Here," and it's oh. it's photographs from space by Chris Hatfield. And um, he does something really fun in this particular book. Uh, it's, he goes around the world in 90, 92 minutes um, from the um, from the the shuttle. The um, <laughs> oh my god, I am messing this up so bad. From the International Space Station. Okay. That's yeah. there. <laughs> um and uh and he does these funny things where he takes a picture of something and then puts an object that we're familiar with next to it like uh you know it says this looks like a hamburger or this looks like cheese or like here's here's a good one oh and yeah then, and then uh-huh you know so it's just kind of cute um but some of the images are just spectacular and um so what I'm going to do is get you to uh, write to me the resources that you talked about so that if somebody's listening to this and they want to check out the book that you you just talked about, or I think you talked about a few things, they could just look at this and where can they find you and look at your work? Um, at EliseWagner.com and then at Elise Wagner Studio and uh, Wagnerica at Wagnerica workshops. Also, um, I'm uh, currently getting ready to go teach a printmaking class retreat in Mexico um, in uh, January, and then I'm going to also be teaching um, printmaking again at, in Cape Cod at the International Encaustic Conference uh, in June. So I'm excited about that. Wow. Yeah, I have a few things happening right now. Um, I also have a painting that I'm repairing that came back from being shipped to Maryland. And I'm today is the day that we're going to try to get this repaired and sent back. Um, did it, did it, um, did the canvas pierce? Did it? Well, I work on, yeah, I work on panel. And uh, and the can and the panel broke. Oh. So, um, so we have to. Um, my guy is coming today to secure the panel and stabilize the panel so that I can take care of the 
front of the painting, which was significantly damaged. And uh, it looked like it was dropped out of the plane. <laughs> um, so that's my day today. And then I'm going to finish the small works and then I have to frame them and shoot them. And, you know, <laughs> it's just the, the life yeah, the, of an artist. Yeah. The life of an artist, the, the webmaster, the marketing manager and the art maker and the <laughs> the repair man. Yeah. The teacher, the, you know, yes. The repair man. <laughs> well, is there anything else that you'd like anybody to know before we close out? Um, Gosh, I don't know. Um, if we can you make this a two-parter, if you want, sometime we can yeah. circle back around. Um, I would say just keep on creating through anything. You know, if you're if you're someone who makes things, um, keep creating and keep following your vision of what that means. And um, you can call on me to talk about it anytime. <laughs> I'm good. good at that. <laughs> um, I'm going to tell everybody goodbye and thank you for watching both of us and listening and please subscribe if you'd like to hear about more artists. My puppy dog is starting to get kind of crazy right now. It's going to get noisy. So I'm going to stop the recording and stay okay. there at least just for a minute, but I'm going to stop the recording. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>